Do you get that feeling like on Christmas morning that you got such cool gifts that you just immediately want to play with them and just shove everything else away? That's what we're going to do. From my husband, I got these two skeins of Langyarn's Muse. It's a alpaca suri yarn, which I think would be absolutely beautiful when combined with my mom's gift, which is this ball of combed top. Uh, this was not enough to do what I had in mind to do, so I bought myself an even bigger ball. Look how good these two would combine together. They did not coordinate this, but it's so beautiful and I'm so excited just to spin this. We're going to spin this combed top and then knit a sweater together with this Suri alpaca yarn. And then ladies and gentlemen, this is actually the first time I will be spinning a merino combed top. Yes, merino even though I might have slightly gained the reputation of uh, a merino basher, which I'm not. I have nothing against merino yarn. I do have some antipathy for merino purists that are like, oh no, merino is the only yarn, is, yeah, well, it's the only wool, it's the only yarn that you can wear next to skin. It's the only wool with thin enough microns well, this bag over here tells me that the merino comb top that I am spinning right now, which is spinning absolutely like a dream, has 27 microns, which is exactly the same amount as I had my Flemish sheep tested. So, <laughs> where's your answer on that, merino purists? I'm right now also just spinning my default yarn on this wheel, uh, which is a rather fine yarn, a thin yarn. I don't have a pattern in mind yet, so I'm not spinning to acquire a certain gauge. I will spin, see what the gauge is, and then find a pattern. And just like that, we have two bobbins with singles. I also encountered like a, the weirdest error with one of my bobbins. It, it, it actually just disintegrated. The round circle came loose because of the pressure of all the yarn. I fixed it with wedging a bit of paper in there. I don't know if you can see, it's right over there. Anyway, um, I hope this holds. <laughs> let's ply. Let, let's see how this yarn looks as a two ply because um, I am very excited for this beautiful red deep color. Dost thou remember that we had some slight issues with a bobbin coming apart? The issue, the issue has only gotten worse now that we're plying. It's, oh my god! Like, this is a very. I spun a very high twist, high energy single. This is like a, a thousand ply and a boucle at that. It's not good, it's not good, but we're, we're going to try and keep on plying. This bobbin does seem to have less singles on it than this one, so maybe this one runs out before we even get to this monster. And then we can just chuck it out. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Maybe something magical happens. <laughs> a miracle, maybe.
that's not a bad amount of yarn. And we could stop in time to chuck this disaster out. Am I the only one having a troubled friendship with the upright Ashford Lazy Cake? Because this one is actually lazy. I'm not going to call it a hardworking cake because it's just falling over. Stop it, will you? Will you? Stop it, plus. This was 246 wraps around my nitty noddy. And since we know that my nitty noddy is approximately, well, one full wrap around is 1.4 meters, that makes this cane 354.4 meters. Not bad, but of course that's pre-washing. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Pretty good, high twist angle, I think. Um, or well, no, it's just just normal, just my normal yarn. Let's wet set this, and then we can swatch and find a pattern that we can make with this. I, I have some things in mind that are pretty exciting. And another thing that we shall attempt to undertake is gluing these bobbins. I have the yarn drying somewhere else where it's warmer, but look at the color of the bath. Sheet! Well, gotta be careful with that, I think. So, we have got our hand spun and our novelty yarn both caked up, and now Let's try to swatch for some patterns that I have in mind. The combination of this makes me think class, elegance, everything I'm not right now because I'm channeling my inner grandfather. And the class elegance made me think, well, I do have a book about vintage Hollywood knits. I have two contenders right now. This cardigan as worn by Claudette Colbert. And this sweater by John, that was worn by John Crawford. Um, but this one has short sleeves and it's January and um, I'm getting spontaneous pneumonia of just looking at it. So I'm going to try to swatch for um, the other one. The thing is, they're both knit on four millimeter needles. So if I'm closer to this gauge than, than the other gauge, I can just switch around. I've got four millimeter needles in a, I don't know, pretty fitting color uh, from my grandmom's stash. Let's make a swatch. It is pretty evident that if we are going to stick with four millimeter needles, it'll not be the Claudette Colbert cardigan. Let's try for the John Crawford sweater. John Crawford is go. I just went ahead and started knitting. I chose to do the ribbing only in the handspun merino because I think it will both add some visual interest and also a little bit of a resting point for the eye because with the fluffy novelty yarn it's going to be very busy on the rest of the blouse I think. Now if I was worried last time that I was tricking you into watching a flat knit stocking net sweater this is actually just a variation of a flat knit garter stitch sweater well you guys didn't seem to mind so garter stitch sweater it is it's not actually a full garter stitch sweater because on the knit side you have to go below like um, every other stitch you go one below and you alternate so you get this fun texture 
yeah, I think this is going to be pretty, so pretty. And as I said, I just went ahead and started knitting. I don't have all the hand spun merino yet that I need, but that's why my Queen Christine is right here next to me. We can just knit, spin, knit, spin, knit, spin, you know, do whatever sequence we like because it's my life and I can do whatever I want. This is um, working up superbly fast. Like I've almost the entire back done in no time, like literally no time. Anyway, I still have this left from the first skein I spun and I'm almost done with the back. That is remarkable. Didn't think I would get this much sweater already out of one skein. Maybe all I need to spin further is the rest of that one small ball of comb top. And then I didn't need to buy the big one. I don't know, we'll see. And it's always great to have some extra leftover red comb top, I think. So right now we have an entire back piece finished and a front piece started, but I think it is time to spin more. I don't think this will be enough. I'm pretty sure this is not enough. By the way, this is what I still have left of the 100 grams of a merino combed top. And I have a full back piece and the start of a front piece. It is highly possible that this is going to be enough. But then again, um, in a different video where I showed you this one, I said that it was 300 grams of merino because on my scales, it reads as 300 grams, although the bag says it is three ounces, so approximately 100 grams. Whose scales will in the end be correct? Since I have a meeting outside of town, I thought it was a little bit ridiculous to go to the office and then go to that meeting. So I took an hour of work to spin. Don't tell my boss. Yes. I am painfully aware of the fact that it took me more than two months to finish this bobbin of yarn. This was actually the first project that I started this year, so really at the beginning of January. Yeah, you can see the date right now. I mean, not the date right now, the date right now is March 14th. By day, P day. But when you're seeing this, it's probably even later because I still have to knit the rest of this sweater. Which, I mean, in the beginning I said, oh no, short sleeve, it's January, it's so cold. Yeah, it's going to be at least April when you see this, so right in time for nice weather, I think. <laughs> Wee! Anyway, let's get this off the bobbin, in the water, get it dry, and then we can start knitting again. That's another hefty skein of yarn. I can't tell you how many meters it is because I didn't keep count of counting. Well, let's hope we can finish it with this. I really did not enjoy spinning it. However, um, the commercially prepped merino is not my favorite, uh, as you may know. So I really hope this is the last.
I have been knitting quite a lot on this project. However, I have been doing it mostly on location, so during Hasselt Handwerk and at my mom's place, where my mom was coincidentally knitting something that was very similar in colors and yarn choices. But I have come to a point where I am now no longer confident that this bit of yarn will be able to finish like both sleeves and the neckband. I'm not willing to risk it even though it's not the nicest of spins, so we're going to spin some more. This is what I have left from that first original ball of comb top or roving. I have been saying comb top the entire video, but could have, could be roving either way. Um, this is what I have left. I think if I spin this, then I should have enough. That, like the, just the entire ball is exactly enough to finish this sweater. Now, I had been spinning this entire project on Christine, but as I was like, yeah, I'm done with that. I can use her for another project. <laughs> She's not available right now. So we'll have to do with another wheel. And I'm thinking Gillian, she's free. And this could be a very quick spin if I do it on Gillian. So let's do that. And to make sure we have two kind of equal bobbins, I'm just going to split this down the middle. This is the middle. No, that's not the middle. This is more the middle. It was maybe a little bit confusing when last time I said that I didn't enjoy spinning this, while in the beginning I actually said that it spins like butter. Uh, and both statements are true. It's just this commercially prepped and dyed merino just spins too consistent. There is no challenge in this. I'm not sure whether this is superwash or not, but it also feels less natural. I don't know if you have the same experience as I have with um, commercially prepped fibers, not, maybe not necessarily merino, just commercially prepped fibers, because I usually spin my own fleeces, so I prep them myself, and that's very rudimentary prep in a lot of ways. The dyes are natural, it's just some alum and some leaves. I comb or card it myself, and it just feels different, you know? And I personally prefer the more rudimentary, natural wool. This is just always all the same, if you get what I mean. The discussion about this can continue in the comment section. Thank you very much. Small skein. Uh, hopefully this is enough to finish the sweater. Let's get back to the knitting. Boop. This project is cursed. Or, second possibility, I am just clumsy. However, I feel like the English word clumsy doesn't entirely capture the meaning of what I'm trying to say, so I'm going to say it in Flemish. Maybe I am just loop. Because a couple of days ago I had to bring my husband to the train station like very early in the morning, a couple of hours before my brain actually starts working. I come back home and I think, oh, maybe let's take a nap. But I forgot that, of course, my knitting project was still in the sofa. I went knee first into the sofa and... Ah, <sighs> And there goes my very precious Knit Pro interchangeable needle. I also apparently have less patience than the postal service needs time to bring me my replacement, so I have now switched to a different size, like 0.25 smaller. Maybe that will give the top of the sleeve some extra sturdiness to give more of that rounded fluffy up top shape. We will see, and otherwise I will just have to frog and start again when the right needle size arrives. Cursed! Cursed! Uh, or lump. Yeah, yeah, probably lump, though. Like the difference between lump 
and clumsy. Like if you would literally translate clumsy to Flemish, it would be like klungelig or something. But lump is like an extra degree of clumsiness. Things only Flemish people understand. You know, to finish off the Joan Crawford look, I need I need one more thing. Just a minute. There we go. Now we can authentically say this is a Yenta Crawford look. So let's get into the talking about this blouse now. <laughs> because I have thoughts and they are not all very friendly to the pattern. Because, I mean, you saw me do a gauge swatch, right? I did that. I did that on camera. And still, while this sweater, stupid chair, this, this blouse looks snatched, pretty, when tucked into a pants. Like, I am really behind this look, it's looking fabulous. But I knit the size that was supposed to fit a 88 centimeter bust. I am a 92 centimeter bust, but I thought, well, you know, it's a vintage pattern I could do with some negative ease. But what is this? Why does this have like more than 20 centimeters of positive ease? without it actually mentioning on the pattern because I have very, very small shoulders. I mean, my frame is small, but my bust is not. So that meant I had to sew the shoulders on at least six centimeters closer to the neckline. Maybe this is a user issue, a user problem that I should, whenever I knit these 40s inspired designs, knit for my shoulders and not for my bust. That could be a thing. Like, right now, just always go for the smallest size because they have petite shoulders. What do you say? How do you knit these vintage-inspired pieces? Do you knit for your shoulders or for your bust? Another thing that was totally not logic, because, you know, you saw how much ease I have with the size for 88 centimeters. For the cuff on the sleeves, the pattern asks you to do 13 rows. And those 13 rows should equate to 9 centimeters. I shall repeat, 9 centimeters. I, I don't even have 4. Was I supposed to do like both the wrong side and the right side together as one row? Did that count as one row? But then it didn't do that on the collar. However, I did make the collar a little bit longer. It had to do 11 rows. That didn't look right, so I went with 18. But 22 would have been 
just too much. But overall, as I said, it's looking snatched, it's looking good. Especially with the color choices I made, the choices of yarn I made. Oh my god, like how did my husband and my mom, without talking to each other, find such a perfect combination? And it's so soft, like the Surya alpaca. I want to comb my sweater. That's how soft and how hairy, how fluffy it is. Really like my decision of doing the cuffs, the collar, without the Surya alpaca. It gives really a point of interesting, but also a resting point for your eyes because the Surya alpaca is really wild and chaotic. Even though it is technically too big, I think I managed well by taking in the shoulder seams and when the weather gets a little bit warmer, because I am um, very chilly on my arms right now, this will get a lot of wear. I could be salty about some parts of the pattern. This still is a great blouse. Also, I like the color. I usually don't do anything in red. Red is mostly not my color, but this is like a colder toned red. Yeah. This is nice. What do you think? What do you say about this blouse? Can I stand next to John Crawford and be as stylish as she is? Or do you say, well, nice, but you're still a chaos goblin? So to round off this quote unquote cursed project, if you like these kind of fiber shenanigans, then maybe you could like, comment or subscribe. But of course, that is all up to you. And as for me, I will see you in a next video. But before we do that, maybe take a look at some other vintage knitting projects. Bye!